have is a hammer, you will tend to treat everything like a nail. Nine, according to the science of being great by Wallace D. Waters, man rests upon great thoughts, they thought great thoughts, and they become great man. Ten, the mind is the brain at work, according to neuroscience. So we are starting properly now. If you are watching right now, we're streaming it live on YouTube. Make sure to hit the subscribe button um, so you don't miss out on, e on any bit of this show. That is it. Let's go. So, um, um, Divine, you first of all start with telling us what mindset is. Define mindset. The topic of this podcast is um, the mindset of Nigerians and why they fail. Or you can access to it as well say um uh, um the av or the mindset of the av of an av of the average Nigerian person. Okay, that's the first important thing we want to talk about. On that topic, we have different sub should I say subtopics or um sub this let us put anything there. Hit the subscribe button, okay? Do that now. Okay, so <laughs> so what's mindset right now? What's mindset in your own terms? Okay, that's a brilliant one. Let me reiterate a bit. He said it's a programmed thing in people that they do it without them questioning what they are doing. Like you said, you're an internet person. You are into one internet stuff or the other. You said you're a little you are, you are discriminated in society to some extent. And that's really true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. To a left-handed person. Okay. Could be. Um. It could be discriminated in the society. And many people don't ask themselves why is such individuals um, um discriminated in society. And uh, according to you, you said mindset again. I repeat, it's a program where people react to things, see things, and da da da. So, uh, we're going about to the next topic. The next to the question we have here. We have a lot of questions for you. Now, let's talk about now. The mindset of the average mind in Nigeria. Can you highlight some common mindsets the average man in Nigeria possesses? Okay. Okay. So number one, the one thing you talked about there, and uh, you said that the average Nigerian person thinks about, um, doesn't think about how to create jobs. Okay. And looking over things, that's a bit true. Okay. So you watching right now, you gotta adjust. Information is power. Okay. Knowledge itself. 
can like darkness does not exist. It's the absence of light that creates darkness. So getting this information right now is like a light to you. So understand that. So to you, you said the average Nigerian person thinks about only how to create, how, does not think about how to create jobs. Okay. And uh, so you said that because of that, we have few people creating jobs and more people seeking for jobs. That's why probably there is um, unemployment and um, this and that and um, this and that. So now we're going back to the next right now. So what do you think education amongst the youth, uh, amongst Nigerian youth? What do you think about that? Do we have education among the youth now? Do we have education amongst them? Okay, okay. Um, you did it well, and uh, from obviously what you said, um, that education amongst the youth, like, um, there's a kind of a misunderstanding there. People are not going to. You're going to school to get knowledge and use the knowledge to create wealth for yourself. But people are not doing that. People are going to get the knowledge and probably not to even use it. Majority of them don't even use it. You see, a person studying industrial chemistry, like as you said will not even use the knowledge. Then why did you there at the first place? That's why people have to pay attention to interest. If you're not interested in any course, please don't go and do it. It's going to be a waste of time. You're going to waste. So people go study industrial chemistry, like you said. Okay? It's not from me. He said it. Okay? So some go industrial chemistry and they'll come back wasted. All the years wasted. So why didn't you actually stay, to stay with yourself, observe yourself, know what you love, and know the knowledge that you can use if it is given to you. You go get the knowledge and use the knowledge to create wealth for yourself. This is a big advice to students watching me right now, or watching the podcast right now. So, going over to what we have next. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead and talk.
Okay. So he said, um, any Nigerian person watching right now, read the course you have zeal and skill for. Like, passion is everything. Have you seen a man of passion before? People have not seen, that's why. If a man of passion gets into what he loves, there's no way he can be poor. There's no way. So I don't understand people. So you are a student right now, he said, go for a course you have passion, um, and you have interest, you have zeal for. And you can't do that when you, don't, you know, when you have not spent time with yourself. So as a student, make sure you spend quality time with yourself. Discover yourself very well. Know what you love. It's gonna, it's, sometimes it, might, it does take time, but it is rewarding when you know what you love. Okay? So that is so important. So the next we have is, can you highlight some wrong mindsets in people? Okay, you have already said that. Now, you now, we're going to the main topic right now, the main art, the heart of the podcast now. Now, you said the wrong mindset of the people is they just want to create jobs. So can you correct that mindset? And how do you correct that mindset, if I may ask you? Okay. Okay. So change the mindset of students. So um NGO. NGOs, right? So but uh you agree with me that um NGOs, what if the per if what if there are few individuals? Um because okay, what I can turn something right now. Just be patient a bit. Okay. Okay. So NGOs, you said, uh, will be the solution, right? But how many non-governmental organizations have you even seen in Nigeria doing things like telling people, educating people about even blood, blood groups? Okay, how many, how many have you even seen? We've seen zero, we've seen none. So now, how do you begin to spark this interest in people? Because you agree with me that only you cannot do the work. You cannot, only you cannot set up uh, NGOs all over the world, all over Nigeria. Only you can do it. If a country must be successful, more of the people need to get into this plane of thought. So how do you do this? How do you get people to start, like, becoming interested in this thing you're talking about? When, like, if you are successful in something, everybody wants to do that thing. I guess my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I'm successful, for example, if I'm successful, for example, playing football, you see, everybody wants to play football. So it's actually an issue of one man or something else. And if I start this issue of NGO and I'm being, I'm, I'm being able to reach out to many people, and I am successful in that field, you see many, many people. Okay, like I, I get you really well. Okay, in Nigeria, once one thing can be successful, everybody wants to go into it. Okay, the reason why everybody wants to read medicine is because they see medical doctors are successful, right? Everybody wants to go into it. So your your strategy is this: you are going to create the NGO, your first organization, and once you are successful in it, 
automatically Nigerians will get into that thing. Okay, so that is a real smart strategy. But you are you with me that NGO, non-governmental organization. Okay, like your strategy is a good one. I don't have any question. You answer the question. <laughs> like you knocked it down. You haven't to see again. I said, I said you answered the question uh, well. Okay, do you have any other thing to add to what you just said on how to correct the mindset? Your strategy is really, really testable. Okay, anyone listening, you know you can test it. Nigerians like anything that, that, is, that is successful. Once you are successful in a particular field, all that people want to get into that field. So he is saying that the way he's going to correct the mindset of Nigerians is he's going to set up his first non-governmental organization about probably mindset of promoting self-education. Um, then he says that he himself is going to be successful in that field. And when he's successful, automatically other people will be interested in that path that he has taken, that he has chosen. So that alone is going to be able to um, should I say spark interest in more people to get into what he's doing so that more people can have their own um, NGOs too and they can help change the world. That's a perfect strategy. So you have any other thing you want to say? Okay, okay, that's a brilliant one. You said, um, like, there's a way, in a way, students should be taught about, like, self-awareness, self-discovery, how your brain works, how your emotions work, so you live a great life, you live a powerful life, okay? That's what you are, you, you give to, you advise, uh, should I say, in education or university or any way in which you can pass this information. Whether true anyway, like education on this part of emotions, the brain, and um, those things, self discovery, self improvement, self education. This is not physics, okay? This is different from physics. Okay, physics is good, but learning all these things is invaluable. Learning all these things like is priceless. So that's what he is trying to say that those things also can also uh, be of help. So. Can you recommend? You said self discovery, right? So obviously, you 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 discover yourself when you learn. When you learn from books, okay, written by powerful people like Abraham Lincoln, for instance. Now, and Batman, they they they, they do have their their books, personal books. They've written, putting powerful stuff in them. And there's a book I I there's a video I watched of a guy who said the guy was paralyzed. The doctor wrote him off and said, hey, you are going to remain like this forever. He said, he said his mom said to him, um, son, you can make this happen for yourself. So he, said, he said his mom encouraged him and his mom said on TED Talk, he said his mom said, hey, he, this doctor's report is going to be real when you say it is real. So after then, the mom had to put him through a series of talk in here and there and encouraging the, 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 the it's a man a grown up person is a from the western world was trying to encourage and encourage this and that encourage the person and you know what happened eventually to cut the long story short this man walked through the encouragement received from his own mom you see, it's on TED Talk. I've lost the video. Otherwise, I'll give it in the description of this video. So you watch it and hear him, hear it, um, hear it from the horse's mouth. He walked. He said it was not easy, but he actually did it. Okay? There's another one who says he was trying to climb mountain. Okay? He was just trying to achieve. He said he was just trying to climb um, mountain. The mountain is very, very high. This and that. He said that no one has ever done it. 
I think I think within I think within seven days, so no one has ever done it. Said so they want to be the first person to do that thing. So he's gonna break record. So this guy right now, he actually did it. He, he went he came on Twitter to, to talk about it. So he actually did it um and broke the record. But he was giving the story, he said it was not easy. He said he almost died in the process, but he actually did not die. Then what he said, the advice he gave after having done that thing, he said every man should pay attention to his mind. He said he, your mind, <laughs> he said you are going to stop where your mind tells you to stop, but you are in control to you are in control as to where to like as to where to suggest your mind where to stop. You are in control of that. Should I say system? So you are in control of that. That was his advice. So everyone talking about the mind, anyone who has done great thing is always, always having to talk about the mind. So that is just it. So if you are watching right now, you have to pay attention on your mind. So how to improve your mind? The best way to improve your mind, probably books. Because these great people who lived great life, okay, happen to put their works in paper. Okay, happen to put pen to paper. So most of them published books before they died. For instance, now um, Dr. Wallace D. Waters, the, the, the author of The Science of Being Great, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, they are died, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are all dead, but they published books to advise the upcoming generation on how to live better so you can see their mistakes and correct it. So you live a better life. That's why books are written. Okay, so um, the best way to learn, the best way to survive on this planet is to learn from great minds, great individuals who have actually done powerful things, like the guy who, who climbed that mountain, who broke that record, and other people. There's a guy, there's a, there's a woman called Sarah Otterbach. She was the first lady to swim the English Channel. Okay, it was so difficult, but she did it. When she's done, she, she gave a quote. She said, Fear puts you in a state of near panic, confronted by old adversaries you've already conquered. Those are things to learn from, okay? So the, the best place to actually learn, to actually improve yourself is books. Because all these people, they are no more. They are no more. They have all died. But they put powerful, powerful things that life gave to them, okay, into books. So can you recommend some books for people to read? I can't recall the author's name, but I have heard about that. That's a popular book. Why you act the way you do? Okay, that's a brilliant one. So you heard what he said, the critical thinking and spend time with yourself. Remember King David in the Bible? King David in the Bible spent time with himself too. He was always with his father's um, sheep, right? He was just always there. He spent time with himself. That was when he learned how to play the guitar. That was when he killed a bird. That's when he killed a bird. So that is a big lesson. Spend time with yourself. It is rewarding. It is rewarding for sure. Okay, so um, that is all for me. The book I recommend, um, I recommend um, um, Rich Dad Poor Dad: Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by Tia Becker. 
uh, what is wrong with being black by Matthew Ashimowolo, an enemy called Average by John L. Messing, um, the science of being great by Wallace D. Waters, and the science of getting rich by Wallace D. Waters. You can get all this stuff on YouTube, just search the names, you will get the audible for free. So if you are watching right now, this is empowering, okay? So this is the first segment we um we have to go away right now. So you relax. We we'll come over again for continuation. This is all we got for this segment. Bye. Sheridan, go off here now. Closing. <laughs>